Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Kanish Yeehaw podcast. I'm Natalie. And I'm Jared. And today, we wanted to talk about studios, anime studios. Yeah. Uh, much like here in the West, um, animation studio names do carry some weight. So how we think of Disney as being uniquely Disney, DreamWorks being uniquely DreamWorks, et cetera, et cetera. Right. The same kind of thing applies to animation stu- or anime studios. Yeah. Um, so typically, some people are maybe super into studios, right? Like they look forward to their next projects maybe they even just watch something because it's a certain studio right and not yeah. necessarily because the plot sounds all that interesting to right them, like right? you were saying their studios have a certain reputation to mm-hmm. them um and like i don't know if it's as i mean i could totally be wrong i don't watch a lot of you know or yeah i don't watch a lot of modern cartoons mm-hmm. but like I almost feel like they're, it's more diverse in Japan where it's the number of well-known studios. Yeah. Um, because I'm thinking like in America, we have like Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network. Yeah. Um, you think but, of you think of the, the TV channel. Yeah. The which channel. and it is a studio. Like. Yeah. Like those are studios, but you don't think of as many. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. They're all kind I of can. owned by. Like Nickelodeon is so vast, right? Yeah, Because you, exactly. Nickelo- you have Nickelodeon, you have Nick Junior. Right. Same thing with Disney. You have Disney, Disney, or these two have like Disney XD and like yeah, Disney all the other stuff. Yeah, owns a lot of people under. Right. Them. Yeah. Yeah. Which it's kind of like that in Japan, but not to the same extent. Not to the same extent. Yeah. Of uh, corporate mm-hmm. takeover. <laughs> yes. Um, and some studios are ubiquitous with certain directors. Right, right. right? So, um, for the most part, whenever, like, I'm going to use Disney again as an example. Yeah. Don't really know who the director is or the character designer. Not really any, at least not anymore. Maybe it was more prominent whenever things were still hand-drawn. Yeah. But um, now maybe you'll get a, oh, this person also did Frozen, but you also don't get the name. Yeah, no, like a lot of times it's like from the creators of. Yes, from the creators yeah. of. So um, some directors are more ubiquitous, such as... Um, Which, before we go on, I will say yeah. that this is specifically about animation. Because yes. directors for live action oh, are pretty different. well known. That's different. Yeah. yeah. Definitely different. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of segueing into that, for example... Usually when people think of Ghibli, Studio right. Ghibli, they think of Miyazaki, mm-hmm. right? Um, they're essentially one and the same. A lot of um, Studio Ghibli work will even be like, oh, a Miyazaki film, right? right? Like, it's his name mm-hmm. that is attached to this company. Um, so Ghibli was established in 1985, pretty old, um, and it's popular everywhere yeah that's it's like that's one of its defining traits is that all over the world it is popular everywhere yeah i'd say that it's definitely the most well-known animation studio or anime studio definitely um it's won plenty of awards yes it has everywhere awards everywhere yeah not just we're talking about everywhere yeah yeah it's won awards outside of japan Mm -hmm. which i think it's probably one of its like most incredible things Mm -hmm. yeah definitely um, they have some of the most successful films ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very big, popular studio. Um, some of their, like, um, trademarks would be... A big one is the focus on nature. Yeah. Right? Usually Ghibli, the Ghibli movies, um, have some sort of forest or maybe even a field. Like, some... Some version of nature is present, right? Um, in pretty much all of them. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then that contrasts with usually um, an anti-industry or anti-war yeah. message, right? Um, Miyazaki was alive during World War Two, mm-hmm. so he does take a lot of influence. Uh, he was a child in World War Two, so he does take a lot of inf- uh, influence from his experience. Uh, during that time um 
Also, with that being said, um, most of these movies have child protagonists. Right. Which I think is pretty interesting. It is, yeah. Yeah. Um, most of them are young people, young girls, um, and it's usually them just trying to, like, figure it out. Yeah. You know, for, like, for the most part. You know, I didn't really think about it until mm. now. It is usually girls, yes. isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes, like, it's usually I can young think girls. Of, I can think of a couple that, like the i guess you would say the main character isn't a girl mm-hmm. or a, like is a boy but like the other main character is a, is girl. a girl definitely yeah <laughs> yes yeah um that's definitely like a big part of the movies is that there it's usually a young girl yeah. as the protagonist um and there's also themes of flying because yeah. he was super fascinated by flying whatever. yeah his dad was a pilot his, I believe. his dad was a pilot yeah yeah, so there's usually some form of flying, whether it be something more accurate to something more fantasy focused. There's yeah. some form of flying usually in there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then with the Miyazaki style, mm-hmm. quote unquote, um, it's very detailed. Yeah. Very incredibly. intricate stuff. And obviously, this is also um, easier to do because these are all films. Right. Studio so Ghibli does films. So, films equal bigger budget, exactly, right? Yeah. Equals bigger budget, which means we can make things more time, more it's more time, more detailed. I mean, I just think about um, in Howl's Moving Castle, Howl's room, like that room is insane. Yeah, just all of the things that are in it, yeah. all of the knickknacks. He definitely has a very maximalist yes. like approach to things. Uh-huh. Um, but I do want to point out that it is very detailed, but it's not always realistic. Yes. So, like the thing that exactly. I think of is going to be like the food. Mm-hmm. So uh, sometimes the food looks realist, like I guess kind of realistic, yeah. but it's also to the extreme. So like in House Moving Castle, the like the bacon egg and, and bacon. Egg, the yeah. eggs and bacon that he makes are like really detailed, mm-hmm. but they don't look realistic at all. Like that bacon's huge. Yeah, <laughs> nice thick cuts. Yeah, yeah. Um, the characters themselves are, um, if they're let's say more normal looking people Mm -hmm. like people characters they're rounder than what you would maybe think of with anime um the eyes are very round the faces are very round you know i do want to point out one thing is that um the a lot of the times the uh, the eyes aren't very big no they're not um he doesn't he doesn't use that very like exaggerated eyes unless um unless like the whole person is blown out of proportion. Yes, so then that's the next part, is that you're either, your people are either looking very round and very maybe normal. Mm-hmm. And then on the other side, he has a lot of really unique characters that are very out there. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking of like, Yubaba. Yeah, that's exactly who I was Spirited thinking Spirited Away, yeah. right, with her yeah. huge face and her little body. she has really big eyes. Really yeah. big eyes, really big nose, like really exaggerated. Mm-hmm. Um, or, and then even like some more like, She's kind of humanoid, yeah. right? But even the like really non-humanoid ones, like cat bus, yeah, <laughs> or yeah. something. Like he also has some really weird shapes when, yeah. when it comes to characters. Um, but yeah, overall, very well known. Yeah, definitely the most well known. The most well known. Um, I'm sure most of you guys out there already knew that. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> if you if you haven't watched a Studio Ghibli movie before, you've probably at least heard of one. Yes. Or have actually watched one and didn't realize that it was. Yes. Yes. So then, moving on to another studio, uh, Toei. Yes. So, Toei established in 1948. Yeah. Very old. Which, okay, I do want to say something because I meant to look this up. Mm -hmm. I believe that's when the animation oh, when the animation yes. studio yes i'm not sure when toei the company um actually was established oh yes the toy the com- so toei the company the name toei mm-hmm. in in japanese entertainment encompasses everything pretty much yeah yes toei does everything yeah as a studio um i know toei for all um when i think of studio or the toei company i think of akira kurosawa's work Oh, because yeah. um, Akira Kurosawa, who is a, a live action filmmaker, mm-hmm. or was, um, really old black and white stuff, right? Um, he did work for Toei. Yeah. Toei also does a lot of the, like, or Toei owns Common Rider, 
Um, they probably also own Ultraman, honestly. Yes, they do live action, they do video games, they do mm-hmm. it all. But Toei the Animation Studio, established in 48, one of the biggest anime, studio, anime studios. Just yeah. because it has such a legacy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, known for stuff like Sailor Moon, Dragon Ball Z, One Piece. Basically, they made like all of the... Cl- like the influ- They made like pretty much every single influential mm-hmm. anime like pre 2000 yes yes like they did. because even some of the older stuff like cyborg uh cyborg number nine mm-hmm. and like devil man they did devil man like, they did Sally the witch i think they did astro Boy. they didn't do astro no Boy. they didn't do astro Boy. No. okay sorry um, <laughs> but like uh they did get a robo like mm-hmm. basically they saw these like they saw these manga that were incredibly popular yeah, and were like, I- I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that, yes. <laughs> like, it's it's honestly really crazy that it was, a lot of it was made just by the same company. Yes. Um, so, very diverse studio, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, but because, once again, this is so, this is such an old studio, they are definitely the ones who standardize um, show, shonen and shoujo art styles in anime. Um, their differences and, yeah. and such. You know what? Um, I was thinking about it. And you know what they really did? Hmm. Um, they established, like, taking, like, drawing things out. So, example, like, Dragon Ball taking a couple episodes because of long transformations and things like mm-hmm. that. And, like, a Magical Girls doing a long animation sequence. Yeah. Like, they were kind of the ones to do that. Mm-hmm. Oops. <laughs> right. Um, so, and also all these shows are very action focused. Yeah. So um, maybe they would have like some slice of life, like the show shows would have some life, slice of life elements, but for the most part, these were all action shows. Um, and as of right now, they're not really making many new things. Yeah. They don't make a lot of, well, recently they haven't like made a lot of their own original ips Mm -hmm. like it's mostly working off things that they've already made in the past so like a lot of like cutie honey Mm -hmm. um remakes pre-cure uh dragon ball like things that are already popular they're just making more of them right yeah okay on to the next studio Mm -hmm. we have studio madhouse Madhouse. Yes. Yeah. Established 1972. Also so also pretty, pretty well, old. Yeah, pretty, pretty old. old. Um, they were ex Mushi Pro pe- people. Yeah. Um, so that was all. That was another like animation studio. Another animation studio. Yeah. Um, but so basically, like th- you'll you'll see this in quite a few companies um, that like the top people will not like how things are run and then just go make their own studio. Yes, that, that is pretty common. Yeah. So, um, for the most part, Madhouse was ubiquitous with Satoshi Kon. Yeah. Which Satoshi Kon made movies. Madhouse does uh, movies and shows. Yeah. But Satoshi Kon himself only does movies. And um, so that's kind of like, it is what I think of whenever I think of oh, Studio same. Madhouse yeah. is, is Satoshi Kon's movies. Um, and then the shows that they did notable shows that they did were Trigun, Death Note, and the first season of One Punch Man. Yeah. Um, so I would say that they, with all that being said, they mostly do seinen, adult-focused yeah. themes. Satoshi Kon's movies are definitely, oh, definitely very yeah. adult-focused. Um, and you made the joke that they don't really make a season two. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah. <laughs> so um, when I was looking, like, researching them, mm-hmm. um, a lot of their shows, like Cho Bits and things like that, mm-hmm. or One Punch Man, right. um, they they kind of have a record of not making a season two of things. Yeah. Like, for example, One Punch Man, a different mm-hmm. company a different has company made the second out. season. Yeah, and then what I said to that was, from what I can, other than One Punch Man, yeah, right. Um, I see Trigun, I see Death Note. From what I can tell, they kind of just make high quality work and have it be one and done. Yeah, see, and that's another thing is that um, 
so a lot of their well a lot of their stuff like especially their more well-known stuff Mm -hmm. was kind of before anime started splitting into seasons right so like it would just be a long season exactly yeah like um trigun is like 30 something episodes yeah Death Note is also up there. Yeah. Like, it wasn't split between seasons. It was just one long go. One long go, and then it was done. Yeah. Which I respect. Yeah, I respect same. it. I respect it. Um, art style-wise, it is kind of all over the place. Like yeah. I said, mostly it's <laughs> mostly seinen, so think of more, um, maybe you could call it realistic looking. Yeah. Um, especially with Satoshi Khan. His stuff is... Um, even more realistic looking because he has separate anime looking characters yeah. or like advertisement um, within his works to kind of like play off of right all that anyway mm. moving on we have next studio mappa yeah which established in 2011 is made up or was founded yeah by x madhouse people yeah like i said yeah it's it's a long string of people leaving, leaving to so, make new um, to make new yeah if i'm pretty sure yeah so i was seeing that mappa the people in mappa actually left madhouse mm-hmm. because they didn't like the like the crunch and like the stress that they were put under for madhouse mm-hmm. but ironically um because they became so popular they now have that same crunch and yes. stress. Yes. Um, so MAPPA, for me right now, is like, MAPPA makes everything, it seems like. Mm-hmm. Uh, modern modern speaking, they made Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen. They made the first season of Attack on Titan. They made Chainsaw Man, um, Sarzanmai, which is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. And of what we're currently watching this season, they... Or they made Hell's Paradise. Mm. So they they make a lot of things. Yeah. They put out a lot of work. Yeah. They're really good at um, action. Yes. So once again, most of these things are seinen. Um, so kind of more adult focused. Mostly adult focused. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of action. Um, and very fluid mo- uh, movement. I yeah. would say that their defining feature is their movement. Another thing that they made was Yuri on Ice, mm-hmm. which for a lot of people, I would say, was kind of groundbreaking as far as how to draw moving yeah. characters. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it looks so good. So fluid. Um, and you said that um, they do that by mixing CG yeah. and hand-drawn. Right. So, what they'll... Um, you see that, I mean, in Chainsaw Man, the very first episode... Mm-hmm. Um, there was a I mean they they go between using CG and uh, hand drawn mm-hmm. the first episode of um, Chainsaw Man you actually saw them where it looked like CG but it was actually hand drawn yeah you know they they like to mix to mix it yeah mm-hmm. um, I would say that MAPPA is definitely one of my favorite studios mm-hmm. very unfortunate that they do not pay well yeah very unfortunate. I was not happy to hear that. Yeah, so MAPPA is kind of known for mistreating their employees. Mm. Um, like I said earlier, they fell into that same like crunch, yeah, crunch culture. Yeah, they're popular. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, moving on, though, we have Kyoto or Kyoni? Kyo Annie. Kyo Annie. Yeah, so Sorry. Kyoto Animation. Yes, they were established in 85, so mm-hmm. also kind of older. And they are known for the kawaii. Yeah. The shoujo. The like, slice of life. Yeah. Chibi-ish so, looking characters. Kyo Annie is known for their cute. cuteness. Cute. Yes. Like, if there's been, like, an exceptionally cute show out there, <laughs> like, they probably worked on it. Yeah. So known for k the uh, melancholy. Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. Yes, that one. And in the movie, A Silent Voice. Yeah. So, very cutesy stuff. Yeah. Right? Um, What is very opposite Mm -hmm. from what we just discussed is that they actually don't hire freelance. Uh, They have a permanent staff. Yeah. So, they actually treat their workers really well. Yeah. I was saying that, um, like, in the opposite of MAPPA, which not saying MAPPA doesn't put out good things. They just, you know, 
you know. We just <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was saying that seeing that KyoAni, their mindset behind animation mm-hmm. is more about um, making it look good versus getting it done fast. Right. So, like, they'll postpone, they'll, like, delay an anime if they're not done. Mm-hmm. They won't, like, crunch culture it. Right. Yeah. Now, the tragedy of Kyoani yeah. is that it did, bur- it did burn down in 2019. The studio did. Yeah. Uh, it was arson. Yeah, correct. People did die. They lost a lot of their resources. So, um, they have been on the rebuild, this, which is why maybe if, you, if you're currently watching anime, maybe you don't even know who we're talking about. Yeah. Because um, they had... Um, it was in 20, it was 2019, 19, yeah. and then of course so, COVID happened. Like yeah. it has been a rebuild. So their last show was in 2018, and they didn't put out another show until 2021. Uh, yes, which, was which is the, the Dragon Maid season two. Yeah, yeah. So they are they're on the on the rebuild. They're on yeah, the up and I think up, they so. I think they have a couple shows planned, mm-hmm. but haven't been like announced dates yet. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we get to see more from them. Hopefully they recover well. Yeah. Uh, next one is UFO table or UFO table. Yeah, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. So <laughs> yeah. I I would say UFO table, mm-hmm. and then one of my friends in college was like UFO table, and I'm UFO like that U-F-O-table. also makes sense. Makes so sense. I have no idea which which one it is. Yeah. Anyway, they were established in 2000. Yeah. Year 2000, and they are known for the Fate series and Demon Slayer. Okay, so. We talk about like Mappa having or not Mappa. Um, is, yeah, is we Mappa? talk about Mappa having really smooth animation. Mm-hmm. No one does animation <laughs> like UFO Table does. Yes, like they, they are have awesome. for TV shows mm-hmm. especially. They have some of the most fluid and beautiful animation you'll ever see. Oh, definitely. And it's all a large majority of it is put into action like into action scenes yes action camera move because like yes. camera movement is part of action like being yeah. able to turn like look the camera like mm-hmm. you're f- maybe floating watching somebody or like it's crazy yeah so they they know what they're doing mm-hmm. and because of that they haven't made a lot of shows yes um, <laughs> yes they yeah they're taking their time um worth noting though Mugen train yeah which was the demon slayer movie is the highest grossing um Anime movie of all time. Anime movie. Yeah. Yeah. It surpassed Spirited Away. It did surpass Spirited Away. So, that's pretty big. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. They're doing, they're doing their stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Next one. A couple more. Yeah. Um, we have Studio Trigger. Yes. Which was established in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, they are ex-Gynax people. Yeah. Which Gynax is who did Gundam. Um, right? No. Shoot. So it's we'll okay. Just... <laughs> um, they pretty much did every other mech. Every anime. other mech. Yeah, Got it. pretty much. <laughs> um, oh, that's one that I didn't put on there. Stun- Sunrise. Um, mm. Studio Sunrise right. um, okay. made Gundam. Makes Gundam yeah. They, you know, they do mechs. They do, you know, they are the mech people. Mm-hmm. Um, Studio Gynax made Evangelion. Evangelion. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Yeah. Um, so those people made Studio Trigger. Mm-hmm. They also made Gurren Lagann. Yes. Uh, Guy Next did. Yeah, Guy Next did. Yeah. Yes. So from, honestly, a really good set list of, of Guy Next shows, yeah. first of all. I know we didn't write Guy Next on here, but also very notable studio. Yeah. Guy Next doesn't make shows anymore. Yeah, they don't. Uh, discontinued. Um, but Studio Trigger, known for Kill a Kill... Killer Kill was the first show Studio Trigger made. First one that which they made. Which is kind of crazy because it's so good. It's very good. Um, <laughs> Promare, mm-hmm. which everybody knows also. I feel like it's one of those. Yeah. Everybody knows. They made the Cyberpunk Edge Runner series. Yeah. Which just won Anime of the Year. And they made Brand New Animal. Yeah. So, honestly, you only. If you watch these, if you know what these look like, it's a pretty. Um, distinct style it's a very distinct style um for me it's always futuristic all of these shows have some sort of future flavor like futuristic sci-fi flavor in my opinion Mm -hmm. (laughs) um 
Um, and that's also always very over the top. Yes. Explosions, colors. Yes. They, it's crazy. They stretch their characters. Yes. Um, the animation style is very like stretched out. It's over, like you said, over the top. So over it's the top. very distinct. It's very distinct, and like I said, it's very colorful. Um, when the pe- when the people are angry, their eyebrows are just like so yeah. arched. Like it's it's all very exaggerated. And it's very pretty. It's very pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So. Awesome and then some, we have two more. Yeah, Sorry. some some more lesser known. Yeah, less, all, all that we've talked about so far are pretty are well like, known. Pretty well known. These are gonna be two of the le- two lesser known ones, but we, we really, really like, like them. them. We really like them. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So the first one is Science Saru, which is um, uh, established to. This is what this is, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Established in 2013, so pretty new. Yeah. Like compared to all these other ones, very new studio. Uh, and they are ubiquitous with Yuasa. Yeah. With Masaki Yuasa. Which, if you guys have been listening to us, to us for a while, I talked about Yuasa in one of our previous episodes because Yuasa is definitely one of my favorite mm-hmm. um, animators, directors, visionaries. Yeah. <laughs> I love him very much. Uh, Science Saru moves that they make, uh, Ping Pong, the Devilman Crybaby series. Night of Short Walk on Girl, Lou Over the Wall. I mean, they, they mostly make movies. They mostly make but... movies. The Devil Man Cry Baby is kind yeah. of an outlier, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but everything is, it's very free. It's kind mm-hmm. of, it's like, it's very trippy. Yeah. I Because I don't want to say like avant-garde. Yeah. But it's very like random. Yeah. It's all very random. And it's inconsistent. That's mm-hmm. actually probably one of their most defining features is that the animation is inconsistent, which maybe sounds like a negative, but it's yeah. actually a positive. Like, trust me, it's a yeah. positive. Because it makes things so funny. Yeah. But, like, not in, like, a this is bad. Yeah. And a this is interesting. And you know? the reason for that is because um, Yuasa's, mm-hmm. like, style is to let his um, animators do what they want to interpret the scene. Right. So yeah. the one one thing that I can think of um, like immediately mm-hmm. is there's one scene where at, in Devil May Cry Baby where um, um, the one where they're eating. Yeah, where they're eating and Kyo, not Kyo, um, Akira. Yeah. Um, his head is so big in that scene but that's just because of how like they how they wanted to portray him yeah like and it just works right yeah and he also has a lot of like exaggerated movement Mm -hmm. like eating you'll see the whole thing go down their throat Mm -hmm. um in devil man everybody knows how they run it's weird it they're like horses it's he's got some weird stuff he makes uh, he makes a lot of mundane things look really weird yeah, yeah. another notable thing about uh, science saru slash um yuasa, yuasa yeah. is that he'll reuse characters so he has a couple character designs mm-hmm. that he likes to reuse um so you'll see them in like uh, his movies oh, yeah. not necessarily in the shows mm-hmm. but in the movies he'll reuse character designs mm-hmm um, I don't remember the reason for that. I think it's because it has something to do with, um, if I remember correctly, it has something to do with um, it being like a play, or he sees he sees his original works like a play, and like so they're actors. yeah, yeah, okay. It That's has to do with like just the storytelling of it. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think Ross is a pretty cool dude. Yeah. Um, and then you wanted to talk about Shaft. Yes. Which Studio. Is- Oh, established in 1975. Yeah, so also 1975, older. which I had no idea they were. That seemed way old for me. Mm-hmm. I thought they were way younger than that. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is because they haven't done a lot, or comparatively, they haven't done a lot. Right. Um, I'd say probably their most well known, their most recognized, would be the uh, Madoka Magica. Yes. Which is one of my favorite shows, if not my favorite. I think mm-hmm. I put it as my favorite. I'm very and, sure um, it is your favorite, yeah. Yeah. And um, they also made the Monogatari series. Um, they've made a couple of uh, of other shows. Um, 
but they are very avant-garde. Yes, they are actually avant-garde. Yes, so there will be... Uh, Shaft understands how to create suspense. Mm-hmm. Um, there'll be, like, there's not a lot of action. There's not a lot of action mm-hmm. in Shaft shows. There's, there's going to be a lot of dialogue and still frames. Still frames that go between things and like sometimes it's just a picture but it create they know how to create a mood really well Mm -hmm. and um that's why i really like them right um i i like the atmosphere that they create Mm -hmm. um because it's for the most part a not a real one Mm -hmm. or like it's not a realistic yeah it's not realistic um that's also how they how they do their characters too like for the most part, all of the characters are human, but they have such like distinct character traits to them and how they move and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't bring up Shaft without saying that Shaft head tilt. There is a head tilt that they do in every shot. It's physically impossible to do. Is it the one where they look back? Yes. Yeah. It's physically impossible to do. Mm-hmm. Um, because you have to have like a ball joint for a head, uh, mm-hmm. for a neck. Yeah. And, um, but that's like iconic in like each of their shows. Right. Um, oh man, I cannot remember what his name is. The guy that, that wrote, um, the Monogatari series, um, they, they do a lot of his work. Mm-hmm. Um, so he won't, I don't think he'll direct, but they inter or they animate a lot they of animate his, work. his work yeah. yeah and i think that's it yes yeah, so those were all the series that we wanted to talk about just to highlight um a few of the popular ones our favorite ones the ones that are important yeah i guess so yeah we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the kanichi ha podcast i'm natalie and i'm jared and yeah thank you guys so much for tuning in yeehaw yeehaw